All right, um, EdTech Dialect session number two, let's integrate Office 365 in OneDrive. Um, I'm going to spend some time going over the different features that are available to you um, of Office 365, um, more specifically known as OneDrive within the Canvas environment. Um, I'm going to go over a couple uh, different ways that you can access and put this tool to use. I think that the bottom line that you need to, to think about and remember when, when using this tool is it eliminates your need to have to go to OneDrive, click the share button, find the copy URL or, or just copy the URL and bring that back over to Canvas. Um, using this integration, you have the ability to simply click on a button, an Office 365 button within Canvas. Uh, and just like that, you are able to place a document, a spreadsheet, a PowerPoint presentation that you'd like to share right within your Canvas course. Okay, and so I'm going to go over the ins and outs of that, what that process looks like, where the different, uh, where Office 365 exists in different places, um, and how this can work better for you. And if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate um, to let me know. So what we'll be covering, as I mentioned, is uh, accessing OneDrive files in Canvas directly from Canvas, um, sharing files in multiple formats using multiple methods, uh, th what the student side looks like. Uh, if you have to help a student work through something, what does it look like for them to be able to turn something in uh, and to access their files um, within different areas of Canvas because they have accessibility to that as well. Um, creating something called a cloud assignment. I actually put to use a cloud assignment last night in my class and I thought it was awesome and it went off without a hitch. Um, so a very easy way and I'll explain that. Uh, if we have time, we're going to talk about collaborations and maybe a couple other tricks. Um, and so to do this, um, we're going to look at how we can access OneDrive and course navigation, um, how to add items directly to a module. Uh, so instead of taking that external URL, we're going to use an external tool to place a file right within a module. Um, what the rich content access looks like, uh, both from your side as the instructor and also from the student side. Um, and also uh, submitting assignments, cloud assignments, and like I said, if we have time for the other stuff. So where's the functionality? Uh, it's in your course navigation. Some of you have seen the Office 365 link in your course navigation. Maybe you've clicked on it. Okay, when you do that, right from there, you have access to all of your files. Okay, your students have access to that course navigation link as well. Um, as I mentioned, you can access it or add items via modules. You can add your files directly to assignments, discussions, quizzes, uh, uh, content pages, anything that has a rich content editor. You can drop a file in. Okay. And I realize that you could drop a file before, but this process is streamlined. It's a lot easier um, if you have your files in OneDrive. Okay. Uh, and if we have time, like I said, we'll talk collaborations. So uh, let's get right into this. Um, I mentioned that you can access um, it right from OneDrive, or excuse me, right from the OneDrive right from Canvas. Uh, and so I'm going to hop out of PowerPoint and go over to my Canvas course that I have set up. And you can see this uh, link right here. And if you click on that, for some of you, if you haven't accessed it before, it's going to just take you through a quick login process. Um, but I've been here before quite a few times, and some of you have as well. And it will bring up all of your files that are available in OneDrive. Um, you can actually open those files right from there. So if you're working in Canvas and you realize, I need to make a change um, um, to a file or maybe even a presentation, all you have to do is click on that file and it will open up in a new tab. And right from there, you will have the ability to make changes um, or review that file as you need to. Okay, um, This just means that you don't have to go to one login, click on the Office 365 tab, find the OneDrive button, and go and find the file from there. Okay, You can access it right from Canvas, which is where I'm guessing you spend a lot of time. Okay, So it makes it very convenient for you. Um, the thing that you can't do is you don't have the ability to add new files from here. You don't have the ability to rearrange or share files from here. Okay, uh, This is set up strictly uh, for you to find files and access those files um, should you need to do so. So that's the, that's the, the functionality of this, this course navigation link uh, within your Canvas. As far as uh, adding files directly to a module, uh, this is kind of the preferred way of sharing files using the, the, um, the integration. Um, and it's, it's quite simple. Uh, it's, it's adding an item just like you would normally add an item using that plus item by the module. 
uh, and, and you, instead of selecting things like assignments or quizzes or something like that, if you're just trying to share a file, you're going to click on external tool. Okay. And what add, the, using this method, what it does for you uh, is it allows you, well, first of all, minimal clicks. Um, it also automatically gives any individual on your roster view only access. All right. So you don't have to worry about, oh, did I set my share settings so that they couldn't edit this Word document? Okay. The integration automatically will set it as view only. Okay. It doesn't instantly give everybody access, but when they click on that link, they are then granted view only access. All right. And that's going to make sense here uh, when I talk about another feature. This is available for Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. As Don knows, it doesn't work well with PDFs. Okay, Heather's shaking her head as well. Um, so, and, and the thing is, is you don't need to, to take the process and, and make them into PDFs because of the fact that it sets it as view only. They, they can download it and change it much like, you know, and they, and they can change a PDF if they really want to just by converting it to a Word document. But essentially, this is dropping it in there as a PDF because it's view only. And like Dan said, if your students do need to have the ability to edit it, they just download it which I can, I'll show you how to do that as well, or how, how they can do that. And the beautiful thing about this is it gives you the ability to view who has viewed it. Um, now, now, don't mistake that for who has actually read it and processed the material, okay? But it does tell you what student actually tried to, to uh, access it. So I'm going to hop back over to Canvas. I'm going to show you just a couple items associated with this process uh, and show you how easy it really is. Um, so if I go to my Canvas course, I'm going to go to that module area. And so there's a file that you want to share. okay? And you don't have to worry about bringing those files into Canvas anymore. Um, and I, you can see up here I have a couple already added. okay? I have my presentation is added as an external tool. Um, I have just another one as an example for an external tool. So to add it, I add an item like I normally would from the module. But instead of sele selecting assignment quiz or anything like that, I go down to external tool. Don't confuse that with external URL because we need to access that Office 365 external tool. And if we scroll down, we'll see Office 365. And right like that, you have access to all of your files. Okay. Now, you're not able to add whole folders. As you can see, there's no checkbox next to it. Okay, but when you do find the file that you'd like to add, whether you're going in your folders or finding the file right here, uh, or if you can't find it, there is a search box that will allow you to search for files. Um, once you find it, all you do is click on it and you can attach the file. If you don't like the name as it appears, you can scroll down and there are some settings. So you can see that it just puts the file name there. Um, so if you want to change it to something more specific, you could do that. Okay. And once you once you add it, there it is. It shows up as a as a link. Okay. And you have the ability to open that up as do your students, and they will actually view it right within Canvas. There we go. So so I'm since I own this document, I have the ability to to edit it. Yes. Correct. So if I go to the student view of it, which I can do right now, um, and I refresh this, I'm in that course. Um, and here is, I think this is the one I just, no. Here's the one I just added right here. So you're going to see the difference between the student view and if this is, you cannot view this content. I'm walking out. Okay. And so you can see from the student view, they can't change it. But the beautiful thing about the instructor view, since you own this, if you need to make a change to this, okay, you can. Oops, I do have to click on edit document. Okay, so basically what you're seeing is the word online that you would see right from within uh, uh, OneDrive. And so if we just go ahead and once this loads, we have the ability to change and make changes to it. So, so when we post those, those are all posted as links. Think of those as like a mirrored reflection of where it's at in your OneDrive file. Okay, so when a student clicks on it, it's just showing what's stored in OneDrive. Okay, so if you post something, like I said, and you need to go back and, oh, I, I spelled that word wrong, or I don't like the wording of that, and you go into OneDrive and change that, 
it will reflect on your student's link as well. Okay, that's the true beauty in this is the fact that, you know, before when you uploaded a file and you saw a mistake, you had to delete the file, go in Word, change the file, save the file, upload the file, post the file. Now, you see a change you need to make, you just go to where it's located. As the instructor, you can just go to it in Canvas, make the change and it's done. That's it. Okay, your presentations, your spreadsheets. Okay, so for example, so, so right here, okay. I just added this as an external tool item, okay? And so as the instructor and as the owner of this file, okay, I have the ability to go, oh, that's supposed to be a Y there, all right? If I go to that student view, so I go to my other browser that I have open, and I refresh this, that file that I just made a change to, okay? It's gonna work, okay? The, the, the Y part hasn't updated yet, but you can see that other text that was there is gone, okay? And if the student refreshes this again, I'm not gonna keep refreshing it, okay? Uh, but you can see how easy it is to attach a document. You can see how easy it is to share that with your students as well, okay? Um, so back to uh, the PowerPoint and the next item. So that's adding via a module, okay, and sharing your file. You also have the ability to share files um, as attachments to any place that you see the rich content editor, okay? The rich content editor is, that editor is that text area that you see in content pages and discussions and quizzes and assignments. It's where you add the text. Um, students see the rich content editor in discussions and assignment submissions, okay? So they have the ability to access this as well. Uh, so what does that look like? I will show you. So if you're somebody that likes to put like inline files, and I know that Heather does it and Michelle do a lot of content pages with actual links to things like that within their content pages, um, it's very easy to do and there's an icon. Uh, you may have noticed it um, within that rich content as soon as I can get there. Um, so let's say I have, um, as soon as this hides, okay, so I have this um, week one discussion here. Okay, so I'm going to open that up. And I have that area where I can add the, the instructions for the discussion. All right, all I have to do is, is click to edit that to bring up that rich content editor. And your students see a similar version of the rich content editor in their assignment submission area, but also in their discussion area when they're posting a response to a discussion. If you don't see the Office 365 icon up here, you just click on this little V that says more external tools and you should see a link to it. Okay, and what this allows you to do, it allows you to either hyperlink some text with a file. You can also hyperlink an image simply by selecting it. Okay, so if I want you to review this document right here, I can actually go find that document. Okay, by highlighting the text, clicking on my Office 365 icon, and going and finding that file that I want to share with my class. And just like that, it will link it, all right? If you're somebody that just wants to put the file name out there, then don't select anything. Just go find that 365 icon, and just like we did before, go find that file. You can only select one at a time, and it will drop that file with a file name right here in your rich content editor. So that's another way for you to share a file. Okay. Uh, moving right along. Um, so I covered making a change to a file and how easy that is. Um, you can either open it from that the, the course navigation area or if you add it as an external uh, tool, um, you can easily edit it right from within Canvas. I have this slide in here uh, to add by external URL. That's something that you have been able to do. You still can add by external URL, but you got to go to OneDrive, you got to click on share, you got to find that URL, and then you got to bring it over to Canvas. Um, there are some instances where you might still need to put that to use, like if you're trying to use the redirect tool uh, in course navigation, for those of you that are familiar with that. Um, but uh, it's going to give your students extra clicks. It's going to make you have to, have to be paying attention to your share settings. Uh, and overall, I, I don't recommend uh, this way if you have your files uh, in OneDrive. Um, one, one thing that I, I tried, well, I've tried this before, but I actually put it to use in my class last night, is it's cloud assignments. Um, and what this allows you to do is create a template of, of sorts. 
Um, you can create a template for a PowerPoint or a Word document or an Excel and distribute it easily to your class for an assignment. Um, so, so what does that look like? I will show you. I will show you exactly what this looks like um, as soon as my computer jumps over there. Uh, with a cloud assignment, if you generate an assignment, so I'm going to take you through from start to finish here, and it's a relatively quick process, so even though we're kind of getting short on time, I can still do it. Um, so when we go and generate a new assignment, okay, so I click on the plus sign like I would normally do to, to create an assignment, okay, and I'm going to create a new assignment. I'm going to call it a cloud assignment. And I think I've named it a cloud assignment that before, so I'll put a one behind it just to be specific. Okay, and all I did was create an assignment right now, like like you normally would in Canvas. Okay, but the but the the key is in the settings. So, one thing before I go into the settings, if you would like to add a rubric to your cloud assignment, you need to do that right now. Okay, reason being is because this button will not be here after we add. Um, the, the, the cloud setting to the assignment. So if you're somebody that likes to use rubrics, uh, you need to add it before you add the cloud integration to it. All right. And so when you're ready to go, you just go to edit like you normally would for your assignment. And you can give it your points. And when it talks about the submission type, okay, you're going to change it to an external tool. And just like we did when we were adding an item to a module with an external tool, we're going to go and we're going to click on find and we're going to go find that Office 365 cloud assignment this time. And I know I'm going kind of fast because I'm trying to get through this. Um, I can review any of this stuff with you, and I'm happy to sit down with you on cloud assignments. I just want to show you what, it, what it's capable of. Okay? Uh, and so what I can do now is go find what I want to share with my students. So, for example, last night in my class, I wanted them to go out and I wanted them to compare and contrast prices uh, and spe specifications for laptops, tablets, and desktop computers. Okay? So what I did was I set up a spreadsheet for them that had type, price, location, hard drive size, and stuff like that. And all they had to do was when they opened that assignment, they had that spreadsheet waiting for them. And all they had to do was fill it in. Each one of them got a separate copy of that spreadsheet. So it's not like they were all editing it. It became theirs. Okay. So when I attach this file, okay, make sure that it's what I want, and I click Select. And we're ready to go. Okay, I click Save and Publish. And now, if I go over to the student side of things, I should see a new assignment available for me in week one. Cloud assignment one. There it is. So your students see an assignment just like you normally would, or like 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 they normally would. But when they open it, it should load right here for them to work on. But right from here now, your students now have a copy right within Canvas that they can work on. Okay, so I'm work. I'm 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 an actual student working in Firefox right now. Okay, and if I want to edit this, I just have to click on Edit. One more step, I know. Okay, but I can change and do what I need to do. If this was a Word document, I could type my paper right here. And if they have to walk away from this, if they can't, if they can't get to it right now, okay, it actually creates a Canvas folder in their OneDrive. Or they can come back to this assignment and it will load in Canvas, but they can access this file via OneDrive. It creates a, the name of this, my class that I have this student working in is class one. So I go into that folder and you will actually see, okay, that example spreadsheet that I just created for them right here. So right from here, there's that file and I can be working on it right here and when I'm ready to submit it, I just go back to that area in Canvas as a student and I click submit. Just like that. It's that easy. Okay. Uh, you, could, you could share with them a blank Word document if you wanted to, if you were worried about them being able to access this stuff. You could share with them a worksheet with five questions on it that they could ask right from there. Okay, And that's called a cloud assignment, um, and it's set up within your assignment settings. Okay, um, And if you got any more questions on that, let me know, but we're kind of going into overtime here, uh, and so I want to get through just a couple more things. Um, 
These aren't available on the, on the Canvas mobile app, so that's one downside to that. So let your students know that just because of the integration with OneDrive. I know that there's a OneDrive mobile app and a Canvas mobile app, but they don't work together yet. Okay. Um, as far as students turning in assignments, uh, I was in presenting to a GNST uh, class Monday night, and students were asking about the process for submitting assignments via 365. I have my files in 365 or in OneDrive. How do I submit them into Canvas? And I said, as long as your instructor has file uploads as a submission type, your students will be able to go directly from 365 within Canvas. When you click on uh, um, URL for a, a submission uh, uh, method for your students, it will show the 365 tab, but it won't work. Okay, You have to select file uploads. Um, and so what does that look like from the student side? Uh, just quickly, uh, Turnitin works with this as well. Um, if the students do turn in using the 365 option, they can't go back and edit their file later. So like a student turns something in and then realizes, oh shoot, I screwed up. I didn't include this paragraph on this that you were requiring. They have to resubmit it. They can't just go into OneDrive, make the update to the file, and it reflects what has been turned in is what's been turned in. Okay, so if you go and make changes or, or, or grade them, say, hey, you did this wrong, they can't argue and say, ah, well, you said I did this wrong, but I didn't because they had changed it. That doesn't happen. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. I tested it. Um, but as far as, as far as submitting an assignment, um, they just click on the assignment like they normally would. Um, of course, um, I've already submitted this, so I'm going to have to do a resubmit. But this is what they see. They see the Office 365 tab, and just like we've seen, it will load their OneDrive files. And they can just check on the one they want to turn in, attach the file, and it turns it in. Okay, it's very simple from a student side. That's it. All right, a um, couple more things, and then I am done. Um, so I covered student submissions, um, fully functional in SpeedGrader. You can hop on and make comments and annotate just like you would a normal file upload because it displays as a file upload. Hence the inability for the students to make changes after they submitted something. Okay. Um, Another cool thing is, is the ability for students to um, turn in something if they're working in Word. Uh, Word and PowerPoint, uh, no, Word and Excel, I believe. There's actually an add-on. Okay, so I'm in Word online right now. And if I go to Insert and Office add-ins, there's a Canvas add-in. Okay, and this isn't just in, in Word online. This is also in the actual Word app. Um, I think I still have it open. Um, but I'm not going to go into it right now, but all you have to do is find your add-ins and type in Canvas, and your students have the ability right from here to see all of their courses they're a part of. Um, if I click on uh, a course, it will load all the assignments that I can upload this to. Okay, so for example, I want to turn this into assignment three. Um, I'm not sure if I have the assignment settings allowing me to do that, but just like that, I just submitted that to an assignment in a Canvas course. Very easy, okay, very easy. Your students probably don't know about this. Uh, and if you don't feel comfortable explaining it to your students, I'm happy to stop in your class for 10 minutes and show them, all right? Uh, I don't believe it's available in PowerPoint. It's only something that's available in Excel, uh, both online and desktop um, and Word. So uh, a couple last things. Like I said, this isn't, this isn't mobile friendly, um, or at least currently. Um, it's something that they're working towards. Um, and so encourage your students, if they're going to put this stuff to use, obviously, to be using a computer. Um, there's Canvas collaborations on your sidebar in Canvas. Um, it's not like totally the integration, but you do have the ability as an instructor and the students do to form groups and create a shared document right from that group. Um, you as the instructor have the ability to pop in and check out those collaborations. So if you've got students writing a bunch of papers in class as a group or as pairs, you can go around and see, check their progress as they're going. You don't have to say, hey, turn in a rough draft so I can review it. You can review the process. If they're doing a presentation, you can review the process. Okay. Um, so collaborations are a cool thing to put to use if you're not currently. Um, and that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, one last thing is, is sometimes uh, fonts, if you use crazy fonts, you might want to tone it down a little bit because sometimes the fonts don't translate across the integration very well. 
So if you're somebody that likes to use really fancy ones, you might be missing out or your students might be missing out. These sessions are meant as, hey, maybe you learn something and maybe you get some questions and we can follow up and talk more about this. Okay, uh, I throw out a lot of information, but I'm happy to, to, to meet with you and go over things or visit your classes if you want. So thank you.